You sitting on the couch, Ashy. You're watching TV and your life is passing you by. Keep procrastinating over and over. Well, maybe I'll get my skin together next year or maybe next semester. No! Do it right now! It'll work with you after work or you can use it before work. You can do whatever you need to do to use it. Go talk to somebody right now. They have to help you. You spend all day on the phone anyhow. Why don't you go to the website that's going to help you in your future? All you got to do is pick up the phone and go to www.askkicking.com. Why are you making it complicated? It's easy. Shop Ash Kicking Online at www.ashkickin.com. Do you feel stressed out about your hair problems? Break free. Welcome to upcare.com, where your hair's beauty and health always come first. Looking to add a little volume? Our hair extensions, made from the highest quality materials, give you a stunning new look without adversely affecting your natural hair. Come join us at upcare.com and let's make hair magic together. Your journey to stunning healthy hair starts here. 45 back to 23 men's bedroom energy. It really works. Believe me, this will be the best money you've ever spent. All natural ancient formula for improved bedroom performance. Thank me later. Stop searching for solutions. This is it. It really works. All natural herbs and plants. Increase your potency and bedroom experience. Light the fire. Increase the desire. Life-changing. Relationship saver. Get ready to ignite the spirit of Black History Month like never before. Join us at the Hidden History Museum in the heart of Los Angeles for an electrifying one-year anniversary celebration. Saturday, February 24th, 2024 at 7 p.m. Mark your calendars for an unforgettable evening. Experience our comedy show with a stellar lineup of the hottest new comedians. Hosted by Tariq Nasheed and Dwan B. But that's not all. Indulge in complimentary food and drinks and music that will keep you grooving all night long. This exclusive event is by RSVP only, so don't miss out on the celebration of a lifetime. Reserve your spot now by visiting HiddenHistoryMuseum.com for tickets. Let's honor and celebrate Black History Month in style. See you there! From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work the all-natural, foundational, black, American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit RootWorkStyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Yeah, yeah, I got the th th fizzle, Mac and the Twizzle, that's one of them boom bap beats right there. What's going on, man? Welcome to another episode of Tariq Radio. I'm your gracious host, man. I'm Tariq, and we're doing the late night vibe right now. We got the late night beat and the late night vibe popping off right now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad y'all tuning in. Had to throw something to hype y'all up a little bit. But we're here, man. I'm glad y'all tuning in, man. We're going to chop up some very good game. I need everybody, first of all, why don't y'all give me a good retweet? Retweet this to let everybody know we're live right now. And repost it on Facebook, put it on your Instagram story or wherever, and let folks know we're live right now. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take a real quick commercial break while everybody's piling in the room. And we will be right back, ladies and gentlemen, right here on Tariq Radio. Don't move a muscle. Listen up, squares. You need to get the legendary book on game, The Art of Mackin, by author Tariq King Flex Nasheed. 
available on Amazon right now. Can you dig it? This book has been a bestseller for 20 years, Jack, and the New York Times called it a classic. That means it's out of sight. So this book ain't for no lames who ain't trying to learn the game, jive turkeys. So if you're ready to stop slacking in your macking, get the Art of Macking book on Amazon and Barnes and Noble right now, sucker. Rated PG. That stands for plenty of game, jive chumps. Family, are you tired of going from site to site looking for children's books? Go to drbirdiebooks.com where we already have over 100 children's ebooks. 100 children's ebooks? That's going to cost a few hundred dollars. No, our ebooks start as low as $347 for a pack of 10 unique children's books. That's D R B I R D Y B O O K S dot com. Dr. Birdie Books. It's tax time again, so let the experts at Clark Pro Taxes make filing your taxes easy for you. They can prepare your taxes in person or virtually in all 50 states. Just snap a picture of your documents and leave the rest up to them. Let Clark Pro Taxes prepare your personal and business taxes. Clark Pro Taxes will not stop until you get your maximum refund. Go to ClarkProTaxes.com right now. Their calendars are open for the 2024 tax filing season. That's ClarkProTaxes.com. Follow them on Instagram and Facebook at ClarkProTaxes. Bro, stop playing and start spraying. Leave an op on the ground where you stand. At all costs, yeah, make sure you protect it. Oh, goon juice, the formula been tested. You can defend, defend. Yourself. yourself. If you find that you need a little help, gotta stay ready. Ain't no love in the street. Pepper spray straight to the face, make them get weak. Get it at ogoonjuice.com. If they think you slipping, then tell them to come get them some. If you packing this, you won't be lacking. But shot to the eye in them problems you having. Maximal strip hit them haters on ground. So you can feel free when you out in the town. Ogoon juice and don't forget a shirt, man. You got to stay ready. That evil on lurk. Yeah. You are now tuned into the legendary OG. OG. Tariq Nasheed. I was up on this. To all my friends. On Tariq Radio. 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 Where is Tariq getting all this cash? And I'm here, ladies and gentlemen. It is me, Tariq Nasheed. Glad to have y'all in here on the late night tip. It's late night, but we're going to make it right, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get a real mellow and mackish in here tonight. I'm in a real mellow, mackish mood. Very good mood today. Oh, man, how y'all doing, family? A lot we're going to chop up game about tonight. There's a lot we're going to chop up game about tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so glad you guys are tuning in. Um, listen, let me, you know what? Let me hop on camera now. Let me just hop on in here. We, we family, let me hop on in here. I'm gonna hop on camera right now with the family. Bam. There I am. All right. I had to just hop on camera for y'all. I got my Adidas jacket on. I'm chilling and a very good vibe and a good mood right now. I'm in a great mood right now, ladies and gentlemen, for the late night tip. We got a we're going to chop up some very, very good game tonight, man. I hope you guys are doing good. And um, by the way, y'all like the commercial we did for the um, museum event. It had the throwback vibe. It had that nice 90s throw. That's when we, we used to jam in the 90s. Back in the, the 80s and 90s, we when we partied, we partied, man. You go to parties now, dude. It's different. <laughs> The parties now, <clears throat> the clubs now are different. Um, you go to a club now, a party now, everybody's just kind of standing around, popping um, Percocets or whatever, drinking lean and, you know, it, 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 mongers, they, they act like they can't get out there and groove like they used to. Back in the 90s, man, we would sweat it out. You leave that club sweating. We had a good time. It was a good vibe. Y'all just don't understand. The 90s was something else. But listen here, fam. We got, yeah, come on in the room. Everybody's coming on in the room. We got a lot of folks coming in the room. But listen, check this out, man. Um, I, I want to, I had a court date today. 
and I had a very big win at a court date today. Um, this was my second win. Very excited about that. I'm very excited about it. Um, I was, I appeared in court today. I was virtual because I'd, I'd flown out a couple of times before, but this time they let me do it virtually here in LA. I was in court in Maryland, in Baltimore, Maryland, but I, I was virtual. They let me do it virtually so I didn't have to fly out there. And I was in court with Taharka Bay. Now, this isn't Bucci. This is Taharka Bay, a.k.a. Toronto Johnson. I was in court, and I won again today. I won a peace order against Toronto Johnson, a.k.a. Taharka Bay, in December. It was a sister who was a judge out there. We went to court. And for those who don't know, it's Toronto Johnson, Tarka Bay is a, somebody who's been harassing me nonstop. Somebody that um, we got into a little roast battle and he got a little ruffled because of the roast battle and just took things a little too far. And then, you know, we had to we had to do some straightening. And for the record, by the way, and yeah, yeah, Taharka, I know, I know, I know. But yeah, he's, you know, it's been a thing. It's been a thing. But um, the dude just kind of made it a point in life to just make videos and post about me all day, every day. So this guy's just been on the BS. You know, and I roasted him a year or so ago, clowned him. And for the record, by the way, let me say this, because um, I even testified to this in court. Taharka Bay, a.k.a. Toronto Johnson, is not a registered offender. He's not a registered sex offender. That's just me roasting him and clowning him. That's all I was doing with the guy. I was roasting, clowning, being sarcastic. I said this in court the last time, and I said this in court today. For the record, Mr. Toronto Johnson, a.k.a. Taharka Bay, is not a registered sex offender. That's just me roasting him. Now, all the stuff that he was saying about me, he tried to go in court and say all that stuff. I said in court, all that stuff, everything I said about him is just me roasting, in, in which it was. It was all sarcastic. It were, I, nothing I said was serious about that guy, but this dude was just making videos after videos, these obsessive videos, posting my family, posting my children and the whole shebang. So uh, we went to court in um, December. It was a sister who was the judge, saw the evidence and said, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to grant the peace order. And so he didn't want to just take that L. <clears throat> so instead of taking that L, he went and filed an appeal because in the state of Maryland, you're allowed to file an appeal if you get a peace order put on you because it's going to go on your permanent record. And he filed an appeal. So we had the, the, the new hearing with a higher up judge today. And this judge was no nonsense. So he lost again. And this time the judge threw the book at him. <laughs> so yeah, he went up in court with all that plebiscite babbling. The judge didn't take too kindly to all that plebiscite babbling. For the, look, that, that plebiscite babble don't work in the real world. The plebiscite babble don't work in the real world. Yeah, this he they saw this weird obsession. They're looking at him like, what is wrong with you? They're looking at it like, man, what is wrong with you? And let me tell you something. The case, actually, this case set a new legal precedent in the state of Maryland, because there's never been a case like this that was 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 granted where online harassment is concerned. You see, because a lot of people out there, to be honest, they just people who get harassed online. A lot of black folks out there who get targeted by these to Bay types. They, they really just don't have the money for a lawyer. But damn it, I do. <laughs> so. Yeah, he went up in there with that plebiscite babbling. That don't work off the internet. And family, 
the judge, if, if all if if Mr. Johnson, to, Toronto Johnson, aka Taharka Bay, who is not a registered sex offender, let me reiterate that he's not a registered sex offender. Just comedy, sarcasm, and jokes. He's not a registered sex offender. What day is this? This is um, February 14th, Valentine's Day, 2024. And we're, I'm saying online, for the record, for the public record, Toronto Johnson, Taharka Bay, is not a registered sex offender. But he is documented for harassing now. He is documented for harassing there is actually an active peace order against him now. All right. And let me let me show real quick. If you go to the Maryland case search. All right. The peace order is active. I'm just stating facts. I'm not disparaging anybody. I'm, I'm talking about the case we had today. You go to anybody can go to the Maryland Judiciary case search and type in Toronto Johnson. Um, got the peace orders right here. That's where he appealed last month. All right. He appealed last month. And um, hold on. Let me put all this in here. He appealed. Oops, hold on. Let me type it back in. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me type it in so you guys can, if y'all want to look it up and, you know, we're just talking facts here. And, you know, he has a long record of a whole bunch of stuff. But um, this is the peace order, which is like a protective order. So this is that um, da -da -da, saying um, all of the stuff that this was the initial one. Stay away from me. I'm glad they took my name, my, my information out of here. Shall not abuse, shall not contact, stay away from employment, stay away from school. The final. So he tried to appeal that. And um, the appeal was thrown out. What's the date? What's the date? What's the date? Where's the date? Okay, I'm trying to get these. It's a little sketchy here. Da -da -da -da. So this is where the appeal was thrown out today. And it was granted. You see right here where it says granted, the peace order was actually granted. All right. The peace order was granted today. So y'all can look up that. And they're going to have all the other details in this probably tomorrow. They'll have all the details in it. But man, let me tell you something. Boy, did he piss that judge off with all that plebiscite babbling. And shout out to my lawyer, Mr. Sauter Green. My lawyer, shout out to my lawyer. My lawyer was in there cooking. My lawyer was in that courtroom cooking. He was lighting him up. My lawyer was not playing around. Shout out to my lawyer. The law firm was representing. My lawyer went in there not playing games. Yeah. So here's the appeal or, or the um, court order for today. Now, all dude, I don't know why he went and filed a, an appeal. He went and filed an appeal. And then it, it, the, the judge doubled down. I'm just showing y'all this for the record about Mr. Toronto Johnson, a.k.a. Taharka Bay, who is actually not a registered sex offender. Mr. Toronto Bay is not a registered sex offender, but he does have an active peace order against him. That's going to be on his public record. All right. So this is it. The final peace order issued today. And my man, I don't, dude, if you take an L, just take the L and keep pushing. So it says all the things you're not supposed to do. Um, considering the petition and the evidence, the court finds that there's a preponderance of the, the evidence within 30 days before the filing for the, of the petition. The respondent committed the following acts. Um, da, 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 uh, da, 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 what is that, da, da. All right, the, the respondent shall not commit or threaten to commit any of the following acts against me, bodily harm, false imprisonment, misuse of telephone facilities, equipment, misuse of electronic communications, that means YouTube, Twitter, or interactive computer services, revenge porn, or visual surveillance, 
And here's the kicker. Let me see. Stay away from me, the children. Stay away from the Hidden History Museum at 2131 West Jefferson Boulevard. Shout out to um, the Honorable Lawrence Fletcher Hill, the judge, phenomenal judge. Now, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. This The judge threw this in. Within 24 hours, respondent Toronto Bay, Toronto Johnson, a.k.a. Tahaka Bay, shall completely remove from his YouTube channel and any other internet site within his control any video or other post that contains any reference to petitioner me or any person related to the petitioner by blood or marriage. So the judge told him, take down every video you have of Tariq Nasheed. Every video, every posting, take them down. So the judge doubled down on it. And he has to do it within 24 hours or they put this in here. A final peace order, violation of the peace order may be a crime or contempt of court or both and could result in criminal prosecution. So they threw in contempt. So that's the cherry on top. So now either the police can get at him or the judge can have him locked up. Mr. Bay, and I know you're watching, sir, Who and you're, and you're not a registered offender. You're not a registered sex offender. And he was in court lying saying I said he was a pedophile and a child rapist. I never said any of that. I don't, I don't joke about that. I do joke about the registered offender. That's that, Those are jokes. I don't joke about child stuff. I don't joke about stuff like that. I never said that that man was a child rapist or anything like that. Dude, the judge threw the book. So by tomorrow, if Toronto Bay, Toronto Johnson, a.k.a. Taharka Bay, has any videos of me, any images of me on social media, he is, in fact, committing a crime in the state of Maryland. You understand? He is committing a crime, and not only is it a criminal offense, it's contempt. So the judge... We don't even have to go to the police. The lawyers can just go to the judge. Yeah, I never said he was a pedophile. He kept telling that lie in court, and he kept lying in court, and the judge didn't believe him. He, After the peace order was issued against him in December, he still kept posting videos. He went and told the court, well, YouTube will automatically post videos for you. Just like, what? Yeah, YouTube. YouTube will f post videos for you. They YouTube post videos automatically and then the judge you know we had a recess the judge came back like man, i don't believe none of that stuff you saying man i don't believe none of that stuff you saying yeah so yeah I, I was his basically only content you see and he kept going in there talking about, well i'm doing commentary this is commentary this is youtube commentary i'm just like no commentary doesn't give you the right to just harass people Comment, commentary doesn't give you the right to harass people nonstop. What's wrong with you? You think? Man. You under, hey, man. <laughs> and this, ses, this set a precedent out there in the whole state of Maryland. This set a precedent in the state of Maryland. There's never been a, 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 a peace order granted on these bases before. So now... You know, this opens up a whole new Pandora's box for future cases now because I'm, I'm, I want to let people know, man, you don't have to let people sit here and disparage you and um, harass you online and harass your family and they think they can do it because they're hiding behind a computer. Yeah. Mm. Man. And, and again, for the record, on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2014, and like I said in court several times, Toronto Johnson, a.k.a. Taharka Bay, is in fact not a registered sex offender. That was joke, sarcasm, and roasting. But he is documented as being a stalker and a harasser of me, and there's an active court order 
and peace order against him right now that will criminalize him if he violates that peace order. Yeah? You see? So, yeah, the, the law firm was very excited about that. Law firms, and boy, my lawyer was in there cooking because they knew this case was very important just for the legal precedent. So they went in there extra cooking. The lawyer, oh, they went in there cooking. Cooking heavy. You see? So that's what it is. So shout out to the lawyer. Shout out to the um, state of Maryland. Shout out to them. And then on top of that, they extended the um, the um, the peace order. So it's extended more months now. It, sometimes you you need to quit when you're behind. Yeah. Sometimes you got to quit when you're behind. You double down on doing dumb things and. You know, this is what happens. Yeah. You know? Man. But yeah, really the him coming to LA, that was the nail in the coffin for him. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he's removing yeah, yeah, he's removing the videos. Yeah, if there if the family, if there's any video of me tomorrow, let me know. Anything. Let let me know. You understand? Man, he could have just let it go. He should have let it go from the beginning. But sometimes people, man, they sometimes, man, people just, they just hit that L. They just like taking L's. But I digress. Yeah, yeah, the law firm is, yeah, they're going to get a lot of calls from YouTubers who deal with trolls and all of that. Yeah, this whole thing where people try to make um, a cottage industry out of sitting here um, disparaging and harassing people. Yeah, with the Tasha K thing. I said before, man, I'm going to have to Tasha K. Get the, somebody's going to have to get Tasha K'd out here. And now, let keep, let's keep it a buck. Where my where my Maryland lawyers? Do we have any Maryland or D.C. lawyers in here? If you are a lawyer in the DMV area, particularly Maryland, Maryland or D.C., do we have any lawyers in here? Because y'all know what this also opens the door to. Oh, yeah, yeah. We talked about um, him coming out and getting into it. And I, I told the judge in court, I testified in court. Yes, I defended myself. Oh, yes, I did. I said, yes, when he came running up on me, your honor, I had to neutralize the threat. I have a God given right to neutralize a threat like that. I didn't when I was going to work that day. The last thing I expected was to see this person running up on me. No. I have a right to defend myself. You damn right I do. However, I did it. I was a, it was a. I was so afraid, I didn't know what was going on. I was just trying to, to get the threat away from me. So I don't know, my, my recollection is fuzzy. I don't know what happened. Because he went in court and said, I punched him. Because he's, for a long time, he's been saying that I didn't do anything to him. Remember? For a long time, he was saying I didn't do anything. And I swung and missed. Maybe I did. Remember, he was doing interviews saying that I swung on him and missed. So I might have missed. I don't know. I was I was so afraid. You know? Yes, he went in the he went in the courtroom and showed the judge the ugly turtle game. Look, Your Honor. And he called it the Dusty Turtle. I don't know why he kept calling it. He did a game called the Dusty Turtle. That's me. <laughs> The judge was like, what the, what is that do? Okay. Man. You dig? Yes, he was at the rally too. Yes, he was. He did come up there to the um, um, FBA rally as well. Yes, he did. You yeah. dig? So, yes, man, the ancestors, come on through, man. The ancestors are all look, always looking out for me. The ancestors are always coming through looking out. Yeah. Shout out to the ancestors. 
Oh, I was afraid for my life. Yes, I was. So shout out to the ancestors. And, and again, for the record, Toronto Johnson, a.k.a. Taharka Bay, is in fact not a registered sex offender. That's just me roasting and joking and clowning him. And then when I saw how serious he was and how deranged he was, then I stopped. I said, hey, let me let, let, me let this go. This is I can't joke with this guy. This is something serious, so I got to get serious. And, and I did. <clears throat> Excuse me. You did? But yeah, this opens up a whole new Pandora's box. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Now, my lawyer's in the room, if you are a lawyer. So you know what this opens up the door to now. Now that we have this that's been very well documented, the stalking and harassing now. So now that opens up the door to civil compensation all right so now that opens the door wide open so now we have a basis for civil compensation because now we have two judges that has verified that i have been stalked harassed and put in danger so now there could be some civil restitution going on here some compensation now you see you feel me you see, man, yeah, yeah, that firm, yeah, they might start putting that on their website, you know, but yeah, so now the door is open, the door is open for um, some, some compensatory justice now, you see, now the door is open for that. Sometimes people just need to say, hey, man, let me just take this L and just charge it to the game. Yeah, you said he ain't got no money. That's okay. That's okay. If you got two nickels, let's see what's up with them two nickels. I know, I know, I know he ain't got no money. But hey, let's see what's up with them two nickels. How much money you make on YouTube? You, you see? Huh? So now the restitution can, can pop off. Huh? Sometimes it's best to just charge some to the game, man. But I digress. But I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited about that victory. Because, and, and now we set a precedent now. So people, they're going to have to tread lightly with all of that um, performative trolling and lying and all of that stuff. That don't work in the real world. That don't work in real life. That does not work in real life. And... But let, let me, let's get down to the nitty gritty. We got so much to talk about on tonight's broadcast. And I thank everybody for tuning in and joining me, man. Shout out to the family, man. Y'all in here hanging out. It's late and y'all still in here by the thousands, man. That's what I love about the FBA family and others because there's some brothers and sisters from overseas too who's watching. So shout out to you. But listen, man. Um, As... You all know we're out here trying to get our tangibles. We're letting the political establishment know that we got to get that paper. We need compensatory justice for what has been done to us historically as foundational black Americans. And they know what we want. We're telling them reparations. We're telling it, telling them who it's for. We're giving them some numbers to work with. We're throwing some numbers out there so they know what it is. And they're going to fight to the end to try to play these little games. And that's fine. If y'all want to play goofy games, political establishment, I'm perfectly fine with that because we'll play games with the voting, the voting booth. We won't go in that voting booth. We'll play the same games. Y'all want to play games? We can play games too. So now... The Democrats family, they done came up with something called the Hip Hop Task Force, led by Senator Bowman. <sighs> family, I've been telling y'all for the longest, and this is why I'm making this hip hop documentary. I've been telling y'all this is why I'm making it. I've been telling y'all they're going to try to weaponize our culture. Now, let's look at the Hill and let's look at what they say about this hip hop task force. 
All right. The task force, where's the headline? Hold on, let me go. Democrats, let me just go to the top. Let's go to the top. Let me take it up here. Democrats unveil a new hip hop task force to tackle racial inequality. Okay. A coalition of Democrats are looking to use the power of music to tackle some of the most pressing issues facing black and brown Americans. So you already know where it's going, right? You already know where it's going. The first sentence is on some BS. All right, <clears throat> let me read a little bit of it. Um, Jamal Bowman on Wednesday unveiled the Congressional Hip Hop Power and Justice Talk Task Force outside the Capitol. Led by Bowman, they will use hip hop messaging of building a more equitable society to help spearhead initiatives to address economic equality, affordable housing, racial justice imperatives. Artists like Eric B. and Rakim, Queen Latifah, Chuck D., Public Enemy, inspired the New York lawmaker throughout his life. He's, they're name dropping. Okay. Our lot of who I am to the lessons that they taught me through their music. Hip hop, which celebrated its 50th anniversary last August, has often been used as a political tool for black and brown Americans. Here they go. And he said he hopes to capitalize on that through the task force. Hip hop has always been about ending poverty in America. It's always been, it's been about affordable housing and dealing with the issues and threats of violence. Okay. At this particular moment, when you consider the Black Lives Matter movement to the ceasefire movement and the fight that continues for freedom and equality, it's time to build political power at a level that's never been seen before. Don't try to compare that hip hop to Black Lives Matter. Dude. In September, artists like Fat Joe, Busta Rhymes, Rick Ross partnered with uh, power of the patients to film a public service announcement demanding legislators to create more honest, affordable, equitable, equitable health care system. The group like the Black Action, the Black Music Action Coalition, the Recording Academy and the Black Music Collective also joined forces with Bowman, causing for a bill that would limit the in the ad admissibility of an artist's creative artistic expression against them in court. So now, basically, if somebody shoots somebody who's a rapper, they don't want them to use their lyrics in court. I don't give a damn. Okay. Let me go down. What's happening in our marginalized community? Hold on, because there's a, some more trick bag stuff in here I want to get to. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, da 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 Mar Eminem, wait, what are they talking about Eminem? Eminem, whose full name is Marshall Mathers, grew up in poverty in a trailer park, a story that many Americans can relate to, Bowman said, and lawmakers need to hear that reality. What? You see? The trick bag, they talking about Eminem. Now, poor whites. That means poor whites. This is an all lives matter, a poor people's campaign, black and brown, poor whites, Oh, this is them trying to use foundational black American culture to Trojan horse, poor whites, and everybody else. Look at this. Um, look at this. Here's a more trick bag. They, you think they were going to just let some anti-black male hatred go to waste? Um, Bowman also points out how legitimizing hip-hop can lead to widespread culture change, cultural change. One way, he said, is by addressing misogyny both in the genre and public discourse. The lawmakers point to the story of Megan the Stallion, who faced vitriol and hate after filing um, a char assault charges against rapper Tory Lanez after he shot her. So now they they threw they threw a gender divide in there. They threw poor whites, gender divide, and um, Latino. 
Okay. Bowman, who grew up in a single mother household, said his mother used to listen and enjoy hip hop with him as he grew up. I'm very lucky. I was raised in a time. I was raised in the culture, the time when the culture was not as misogynistic and violent as it is now. Go to hell, man. Y'all can go to hell, dude. Man, please. These folks have so much contempt for us, man. It's ridiculous. Man, man, man. These people have contempt for this is trick bag all the way. Family, this is why I started doing the movie Microphone Check because I saw what they were going to do with our beautiful foundation of black American culture. I've been telling people they're, they've been, they're gonna do this for the last year. That's why I've been vehemently finishing this film so that we can take back hold of our culture. Oh man, we need, dude, we need this movie more than anything, family. That's why we're getting this movie out in a couple of months from now. This movie is coming out so we can tell our own story and gatekeep our culture so they don't keep trying to rape it. They, this year, and because hip-hop is going to be in the Olympics and breakdancing is going to be the, in the Olympics, they're trying to get, they've been trying to get in front of it to remix it. That's why they've been black and brown and 50-50 Latinos and blacks and all of that. So they can use hip hop and get us to co-sign it and use that to say, hey, hip hop, um, it's going to be about racial justice. And since we all about hip hop, we're going to give all of these illegal immigrants coming in from South America um, free housing. We're, we're going to play some hip hop while we're doing it. Nah, we're going to hip hop our reparations checks. We're going to hip hop. Our reparations checks, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you, no movie is more important than this film, man. No movie is more important than this film coming out, man. Family, y'all better run to the theaters to go see this movie when it comes out. Oh, yeah, talk, yeah shout out to Beyonce. Um, speaking of gatekeeping culture, see, they want to rape our culture and, and, and pick it apart and dismantle it and give it out to people without our permission. Bowman is not our representative. Like, no, no, he don't represent us, dude. It's not his place to sit here and give our culture out. He's a democratic shill. You can't give our culture out to who you feel like giving it out to. No, 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 no. You don't, you can't do that. Shout out to our sister Beyonce, our beautiful foundation of black American queen, Beyonce. She did a country song. It's a beautiful song, by the way. Is it what's it called? Texas Hold'em? Beautiful song. And family, when we start doing something that they have now gate kept, they want to lose their minds. Now, have y'all seen the, the thing with Beyonce, some of the country stations? Talking about not playing the record. They didn't want to play the record. Country music stations already refusing to play Beyonce's country song. All right. There's some stations out here that didn't want to play the song. All right. And then some of these stations, they got so many calls, they were forced to play it. Because, see, they have taken country and they are gatekeeping it, the dominant white society, as their own. And we invented country music, ladies and gentlemen. Country music, as we know it, was a foundational black American invention. Let's be very clear. Some of the so-called country music pioneers that are, that are white, like um, the Carter family, they, that was a, a, a white family who made some early country records in the 1920s and 30s, they got the game from black people. Um, the There's a, a style of playing. They call it the trap. They call it Travis picking. The way you pluck when you don't do it. It's a, it's a way you pluck the, the guitar and the banjo when you um do country, certain country songs. They rebranded it as Travis picking. I want y'all to look that term up. That's after 
um, a white country artist named Merle Travis. But Merle Travis got it from a foundation of black American brother who was a, like the grandson of slaves, a brother named um, Arnold Schultz. The foundation of black American brother named Arnold Schultz who created the picking style that's associated with country. You picking the, the strings a certain way. Arnold Schultz. Foundational Black American, even the the, the so called father of country music, um, Jimmy. What's Jimmy's name? Um, Jimmy Rogers is a white man named Jimmy Rogers, who they claim is the father of country music. He's ca often called the singing brakeman because he worked on a train. Jimmy Jimmy Rogers said himself that he learned how to play the banjo and country music from the black railroad workers who worked at the railroads. That's who he learned it from. Yes, Delford Bailey is another one, another black pioneer. Yeah, so yeah, um, Jimmy Rogers, the father of country, said he got it from the Negroes on the railroad where he was working. He was working for the trains and he saw the black people teaching him them work songs because that's what country music is. It's them railroad work songs that brothers were singing and creating when they were working on railroads. Yeah, a lot of those songs, and a lot of them came from the plantations too. So it's our culture. So uh, these, yeah, um, yeah, DeFord Bailey, yeah, he was a Grand Ole Opry. He was the first, um, one of the first people who got down on the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah, yeah. Charlie Pride, another FBA legend. Charlie Pride, another one. Yeah. So we got to let folks know what it is as far as our culture. We got to let folks know what it is, because people love to take credit, man. Boy, people love to take credit when something is constructive. Now, just like with hip-hop, when everything was negative, it was black. Now that it's constructive, well, but, well Eminem and um, he's po, he white and he po, um, black and brown and women's. Huh? You see? And speaking of taking credit, boy, now that the Super Bowl had those um, through the roof ratings, the Super Bowl that just happened, it had the highest ratings of any television show in history. Extremely high ratings. And that was due to the incredible talent of the brothers playing, also Usher, his performance. But no, 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 no. You left, what's, what's the dominant society saying? What, who are they giving credit to? The dominant society, they're saying, fueled by the Swifties. The Super Bowl was the most watched telecast ever. They're saying Taylor Swift contributed to the record um, number of ratings. They're saying people watched it because of Taylor Swift and, and Travis. Taylor Swift in the stands. Oh, they, they're giving her credit for it. Not that phenomenal performance that Usher had. <laughs> Usher gave it up. Usher gave a phenomenal performance. Yeah. So a lot of people were tuning in to see our good brother get it in. So Usher had to sit there and do the performance of the decade. And all this woman had to do was be white and sit in the audience. And they're giving her credit. <laughs> Boy, white supremacy is all about rewarding the mediocre. Boy, you can, if it, white is right, ain't it? In a system of white supremacy. Man, people were tuning in to see Usher get down. They don't want to say that, though. Yeah. They're saying all those people, they tuned in to watch Taylor Swift sit in the stands. All right. <laughs> Yeah, not the game, not us yet, but we, everybody wanted to see Taylor Swift. All right, got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people did tune in for Taylor Swift, but damn. Like Usher wasn't there either. Everybody was talking about Usher. They were talking about him and there was a lot of anticipation. Usher has the, the hottest show in Las Vegas. 
So, yeah, they do it in Vegas. There's a lot of hype in Vegas. The energy in Vegas is real popping. Usher has the hottest show in Vegas sold out every damn show up there. So yeah, there's a lot of hype behind that. But I don't want to give that credit. They don't want to give that credit, but it is what it is. Oh, yeah. Um, Kelsey, remember, they're talking about the 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 ball fade is the Travis Kelsey haircut. I mean, they are just the white media went roughshod on this stuff. They just went overboard. And you know what? OK, look, that's them being on code. We need to be on code, too. We need to be on code. Yeah, people were talking about Jermaine Dupree. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, I got to show that outfit again. Let me show Jermaine Dupree's outfit. That was funny. I got to show Jermaine Dupree's outfit one more time. Hold on. Where's that outfit? And shout out. To, and I like Jermaine. Jermaine's, he's a very talented brother. Um, but hold on. That outfit, though. That outfit Jermaine Dupree had on. And I said this on my Twitter. I said, this is how studs dress to go to the prom. He's dressed like a prom stud. This dude had on some bobby socks and tap shoes. Jermaine Dupree looks like the crispy puppet. <laughs> With a bald head. But shout out to Jermaine Dupree. All right. But listen. But listen, man. We look, we got a new energy coming, man. It's a it's a brand new energy out here, man. We got an energy of empowerment. Um, look, the dominant society, they're on code and I ain't even mad at them. We have to be on code. That means we got to be on code and we're getting on code, man. And we got to stay on code. Um, speaking of off code behavior, did y'all see it was a situation with a brother Umar Johnson. He was doing a lecture down in Atlanta and some some big old ass chick ran up, tried to run up on the stage. And yeah, I don't I don't like that at all. And even, you know, I don't I don't have a beef with Umar. I do not have a beef with him. We, we you know, he said some disparaging things and I've roasted him a few times. But I really, I don't have a beef with him. And I and I um, circle back and get my clown on every blue moon. And, you know, I clown with the um, with the Bucci Bear, car, um, the Bucci Bear cartoon. We had some funny stuff in there. But yeah, I don't have a beef with Umar. I don't I don't have a beef with him. I you know, I don't want nobody running up on that dude with no bullshit, though. That ain't cool. Yeah, I don't want that at all. And what what this chick did, you know, I want I would like to see the brother get tighter security so that ops and whoever don't try to run up and do nothing crazy. So this woman, this big rotund rabble rouser tried to walk up on him. She threw something at him. Oh, what the hell? Talking about we were together last night or something. Oh, Lord. Hold on. Hold on one second. This is this is crazy. Hold on one second. So this was down in Atlanta. Hold on. Let me play this. Hold on. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. They say the nick. Okay, hold on. Let me um let me get my audio together over here. Wait, can y'all hear? Oh, let me okay, hold on. Okay, let me turn that down. All right, here we go. Let's try this. Okay. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. How many books? They say the Negro entrepreneur. How many Who's that queen? I'm with you last night. You wasn't with me last night. I never Peace seen you in my life. Look at my bag. Peace, 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 Brothers and sisters, clap it up for the ancestors. Clap it up for the most high. Clap it up for black excellence. Clap it up for positivity. Yes. Yes. I want to, we want to stay focused. We want to stay focused. They are really struggling to get this chick up out of there. No Man, dude, they are struggling to get this big old woman up out of there. Lord, Lord, Lord. Man, why is a stunt double for Gabby Sidibe trying to run up on Umar? And she threw something. We was, we, I was with you last night. I'm like, oh, Lord. 
Lord, Lord, Lord. And I'm, I'm more upset with the security. They're struggling to get her out of there. Man, get her the hell up out of here. All some she could have had a bomb stuffed up under some of that fat. <laughs> she could have been a fat suicide bomber. It just blew up. All her snacks blow up and it's honey buns all over the place, honey buns and blood and shit. So she could have been a fat suicide bomber, man. They security should have got her up out of there faster. They should have got her out of there way faster. That woman could have had a bomb strapped on her. So all the snacks and the blood and be snicker bars and Twix and M&Ms and peanut brittle all over the place with blood. And come on, man, get her ass out of here before the bomb go off. Huh? Lord. That woman could have been a, a terrorist, man. <laughs> Man, man, man. See, we got to be careful at these events, man. Yeah, she's throwing bags up there. Look at my bag. I think she wanted him to put some snacks in there. I don't know. She was like, fill this up with groceries. And, and it was it was a, a, a food robbery. <laughs> she threw a bag up there. And I think she wanted some, some canned goods or something. I don't know. Good Lord. But yeah, I hope, I, I'm glad our brother is okay. I'm glad our brother is safe. I'm I'm glad Umar is safe. I don't I don't like that at all. Yeah, then she took her shirt off. Oh Lord, I know. Don't let her pull a titty out. Lord, stop her before her breast come out. The breast might have some some arsenic on it or something. She might be trying to poison the audience with breast milk. Take that, niggas. <laughs> Lord, yeah. I want to now. I want to know what's in the bag. She's like, where's you was with me last night? Look in the bag. What's in that bag? Ooh, I want to know what's in that bag. <laughs> oh God, Lord, Lord, Lord. Anyway, man, let me get out of here. I'll be here all night clowning. But anyway, it's been real family. Hey, man, go get your tickets, ladies and gentlemen to join us. First of all, we'll join us at the Hidden History Museum. The Hidden History Museum, February 24th. Um, you go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com, get this book, and get your tickets to join us for the one-year anniversary of the Hidden History Museum um, and the Black History Month celebration. We're going to have some phenomenal comics, great complimentary food, complimentary drinks, so y'all need to come on down. We're going to have a great time, ladies and gentlemen. And you got to RSVP at um, HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. The link is below. Also, get your deodorant at RootWorkStyle.com. This is the greatest deodorant in the country right now. Killing the game. You are going to smell like a million bucks with natural deodorant. RootWorkStyle.com. RootWorkStyle.com. All right, y'all, let me get up out of here.